Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to extract data from a database using a drop down list. So, if I change the branch in my drop down list, it extracts the relevant records down here. So, how do we do this? This solution will not work in versions of Excel prior to Excel 365. You will find solutions for older versions of Excel on YouTube. It's a lot more complicated and involved, and I'm not going to cover that solution in this video. So assuming you have Excel 365, the solution is actually quite simple. The first step is to convert the database that you want to extract data from into an Excel table. And to do that, it's really easy. Click in a cell in that data, and then use the shortcut key Control T. That will open this dialog box and all it's doing is confirming the range of cells that contain your data. And also you have this little toggle option for my table has headers, mine does, so I'll keep it ticked, click on OK. Next step would be to name the table. So you'll get a new design tab on your ribbon. Go over to table name on the left side there. We're gonna call this sales data. Press enter to store the name. Next step is to create a list of all the unique branch names in your database. And we're going to do that on a separate sheet. Create a sheet called list. And what we can do here is use the unique function. The unique function will extract the unique values found in a range of cells that you specify. And to reference that branch column in the sales data table, you can type the name of the table, sales data, then open a square bracket and choose the column that you want to extract values from. Ours is branch, close the square bracket, close the round bracket, press enter. So that's all the unique branch names. If you want them in alphabetical order, put the unique function within the sort function and that will sort the branch names for you. Okay, let's go back to the data tab. And I want to drop down a list here of all of those branch names that I extracted on the list sheet. To do that, I can use a data validation drop down list. So I've selected this cell where I want the drop down to appear. I go to data, my ribbon. I go over to the data validation button, allow a list. And in the source box, once I've clicked into it, I go to the sheet with my list of branches in. I click on the first branch name and then I put a hash symbol in. The hash symbol means that we're referring to the whole of this spilled list. And if it was to get longer, because we added new transactions with different branch names, you would refer to those new branch names as well. So click on OK. Now I have that list. Just to prove that it is the case that it would pick up new branch names, if I go to the end of this table, I'm just going to add a branch name. Let's add New York, which definitely doesn't appear anywhere in the list. So if I now scroll up to my drop down, there'll be an alphabetical order, but you'll see you now have New York in the list. So I want a list of transactions returned within this little table here based on whatever branch has been selected up here. And to do this, we can use the filter function. Filter function has two mandatory arguments, array and include, and a non-mandatory argument if empty. Now array is basically the range of cells that you're extracting data from. And that is our sales data table. Now include, this is where you specify the criteria for which records you want to return. And we're going to say that we're looking for New York or whatever branch we've selected up here in the branch column. So I'm going to say sales data, open square bracket, branch, close square bracket, equals the value that I've selected in this drop down list. So that's my include argument comma, this last non-mandatory argument allows you to return a value if no records are found. So I'm just going to say in quotation marks, nothing found. If I close the bracket, press enter, see it brings up that one record for New York. But if I select, say, Bristol, it returns all the records for Bristol. Now, in a way, this nothing found value 
is a bit redundant because we can only select branch names that appear in this list. But it's worth knowing about that argument anyway. If I add another Bristol record, now if I scroll back up, you'll see that that new record has appeared in our extracted list of records. I can actually add more than one criteria for my extracted list or filtered list. Say I also wanted to specify brand. First of all, I need a list of all the unique brand names. Go back to my list sheet over here. I'd say equals sort, open bracket, unique, open bracket, sales, data, open square bracket, brand, close square bracket, close round bracket for unique, close round bracket for sort. And that gives me all the unique brand names. Now I can go to this cell here and I can use data validation to create a drop down list. There's my data validation button on the data tab. Allow a list source is, well, I point at the first cell, it contains a brand name and then I put my hash symbol in. On OK, and now I get a drop down list of brand names. Let's apply a bit of formatting. I select those two cells, go to the Format Painter, select those two cells. Now I have my drop down list. Let's change this to Basics. I just want the Basics products listed here rather than all the Bristol transactions. But to do this, I need to change my filter function so it looks at both criteria. Now this is essentially AND criteria. The transaction has to relate to the Bristol branch and it needs to be a basics product. Now to specify AND criteria within the filter function, you use multiplication. If it was all criteria, so if you wanted to specify two brands and you weren't interested in branch, you'd use addition. What I have to do is I have to put the first criteria in brackets, and then I say multiplication, open up another bracket, and I'm going to say sales data, open square bracket, brand, close square bracket, equals, and this is where the criteria is in L2. Close the round bracket for this criteria. And you can see what I've got now. I've got the first criteria in brackets multiplied by the second criteria in brackets. So if I press enter, you can see it now only returns the basic products purchased in the Bristol branch. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully it's been useful. If it has, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.